gosh, look at this. See, this is what is eagle pots absolutely ridiculous and absolutely amazing about Egypt is there are these things, these monuments, these structures that are just like in throwaway parts of these temple structures because they just have an absolute glut of things. And so there's so much to see that things that if they were somewhere else would be something cherished in its own right or instead off on these paths with a lone Australian wandering around. Allow us to reintroduce ourselves. Our name is Going Going Back Back. In 2019, we had three kids under five, a new minivan, and a house full of things. With our eldest due to start school in a few months, we decided it was now or never to take an extended vacation. And so we set off to explore the world and be back in time for his first day. We were several months into our trip when the pandemic hit and schools around the globe shut down. It confirmed the idea that was already brewing in our minds, that there was no better classroom than the one our kids were already in, the world. We sold our minivan, gave away everything that couldn't fit into a suitcase, and became full-time travelers. Join us as we very slowly travel the world, going, 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 going back, 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 back. So you see it's 220 Egyptian pounds for an adult, 110, it says for a student, but you do have to have an international student card for that and be under 30 years old. Uh, but that's also the price, that 110 for children from six and up. Children five and under are free. So, when I arrived, I thought, oh, it's not so busy for being 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> I don't know if you can see those crowds there. But there's a lot of people in here. So I'm exiting the Main Amun Temple and into the Open Air Museum where there are some reconstructions of some of the temples that had been moved or needed to be moved. I've not visited this part before so I'm excited to see it. It's beautiful. It's well worth a visit. The Open Air Museum at Kanak Temple in Luxor, Egypt. You can see we're on the outside wall of the temple, which also is highly decorated in part. So here are some of the exterior walls on the north side of the Amun Temple. Some pretty grand battle scenes with horses and chariots. King's looking very regal. <laughs> hey, you've got prisoners tied up, bound. It's like around their necks and around their arms. Small prisoners being led by the large king. And it looks like he's actually presenting the prisoners to the gods. Here we have another image of the king smiting his enemies with a dozen of them all bound together, gripped by the top of their heads. So a very uh, warlike scene. So here's another section of Kanak Temple that I haven't visited, the Temple of Ptah and the Temple of Montu. Um, honestly, I didn't even know they were over here, so <laughs> let's go check them out. Again, you can see a lot of these thorn bushes, and uh, speaking from experience, you don't want to be caught by one of these in open-toed shoes. Gosh, look at this! See? This is what is eagle pass absolutely ridiculous and absolutely amazing about Egypt is 
there are these things, these monuments, these structures that are just like in throwaway parts of these temple structures because they just have an absolute glut of things. And so there's so much to see that things that if they were somewhere else would be something cherished in its own right or instead off on these paths with a lone Australian wandering around I'm coming up here to another temple structure let's see which it is all right through these gates no. Ah, tamam. Sugar. Ramla. <laughs> All right, so the other temple here is currently closed. So I am in the Pata temple to the north of the main Amun temple. And it offers a beautiful view of the Amun temples, the Apostle Hall, the obelisks that are still standing. And it's just me and the guardians over here. These beautiful hieroglyphs. You can see the remains of some stelae just over in the corner in the rubble. It does say that this is a working area, so perhaps there are archaeologists trying to restore this section. Beautiful. I'm never entirely clear on whether the tables are offering tables or um, resting places for the bark, for the barks of the boats of the gods. Perhaps it just depends on what's in the temple, whether the temple was a bark shrine or a place for offerings. See the stairs leading up here. Oh, look. Let's go see what's behind this door. I won't say it. Ah. <laughs> There is still the remains of an idol in here. So there's segment. The camera's doing a good job of catching the light, but when I came in, it took a minute for my eyes to adjust and it gave me a bit of a shock to see Sekhmet standing there in the dark. Look at this beautifully intact form of Sekhmet. That's 
absolutely beautiful. Right down to the toes. So there's a segment behind me. Not in such great shape. All right, let me go into this final chamber in here. I love Egypt. <laughs> Oh, just, it's incredibly atmospheric. There's no words. So this is another little stop that's absolutely worth a visit. Ah, it's kind of next to, not next to, it's on the same side of the temple as the Open Air Museum. And it's beautiful. Again, another reason that you really could come to Kanak multiple times over multiple days or come and spend a long extended day here exploring. So do. <laughs> slow travel or just slow down your travel a little if you can. It's so nice to just be able to take your time and really explore a place. And I know that that's a privilege, but it's one I'm really grateful to have and that I do not take for granted at all. Look! <laughs> Look at that. Ridiculous. Best kind of ridiculous. All right, Temple of Pitta, come and see it. All right, <clears throat> so I'm gonna head back this way. <laughs> I'm running low on water, so I need to do something about that soon. The weather's actually beautiful, but the sun is very bright. And you definitely need to drink water. So I hope you're enjoying this little walk through some of the less visited areas of Kanak Temple. It's um, it's a place that's lovely to explore with a guidebook <laughs> so that you can take your time. But if you got a private guide and made sure that they understood that you really wanted to see all of these kind of tucked away places, the spots that Han has visited, as well as the visited spots. Like there's a reason that the Apostle Hall sees hundreds of thousands of visitors. There's a reason that we're all going to visit that great first courtyard. But there's plenty of reason to visit these other parts as well. And I hope you get to. I came back to Kanak today to visit some of the less visited sections of the temple, but I couldn't come without making a stop in the Apostle Hall because it's amazing. And I love it and it makes me happy. <laughs> it feels so grand. just it makes you feel small in the best possible way it makes you feel like there is so much beauty and so much to see in the world so even if you just <laughs> think you want the off the beaten part things we've done are don't miss the apostle so as a point of contrast, <laughs> these are the crowds in the main temple areas. <laughs> so 
So in here is the uh, sanctuary of the Avon Temple. Clearly a popular destination. Tutankhamun! Very intense in here. Let me try and show it to you. There we go. And that's enough of that. <laughs> Alright, so here's the south side of the Amun Temple. You can see more beautiful reliefs on the outside wall. Phenomenal view of the pylons. And this is the way to Konsu Temple. Another beautiful spot in the temple complex that doesn't get nearly as many visitors as the Hamun Temple. Konsu is the son of Amun and his wife Mut, who also has a temple in the complex. He was a god of war. And you can see here all of these stones with the reliefs. Just, <laughs> I mean, so many. And it's just phenomenal. And it's just crazy to consider that there's so much still standing. There's so much still here. And then there's all of this that was but isn't right now. So you wonder whether over its 2000 years of active worship, it was always kind of in a state of flux or whether there were points in history where it was just the grandest, most amazing temple complex in the world, throughout history in the world. I mean, it's just, it's just amazing. Right, so I'm coming up to the Konsu temple from behind. You can see there's some workmen up there. And some men laughing and joking. So this is the east boundary wall of the Konsu Temple. Alright, here's the back of some sphinxes. There's a beautiful gate right in front of the Konsu Temple. There's some more of the Bach Shrine recreations up in the distance there that they made for the opening of the Avenue of the Sphinx. And here is the Konsu Temple. So behind me is the monumental gateway of Ptolemy III called the Bab al Amarna. It is 21 meters high and is said to be one of the best examples of Ptolemaic architecture in Thebes, aka okay, Luxor. So this amazing Ptolemy gateway is also where the Avenue of the Sphinxes that now once again runs all the way to Luxor Temple begins on the Kanak side. So you can see what's left of some of the Sphinxes at this end. There's a couple that are more intact but most of them are in pretty bad shape. And here's the other side of that gateway, leading right up to the Temple of Konsu. So the Temple of Konsu was during the reign of Ramses the 11th, control of Upper Egypt, where Luxor and Aswan are, fell out of the hands of the pharaoh. 
and a former military man, now high priest of Amun, took over. And here is where he declared himself the ruler of Upper Egypt in this temple. So here you have the Khonsu Temple in the Kanark Temple Complex. This is the front of the temple. And immediately to the west of the Khonsu Temple is the Opet Temple. And Opet was the hippopotamus goddess uh, of childbirth. So the temple was likely begun by Amenhotep III and much of the work was likely that of Ramses III. Let's go see what's inside. You can see there's still some color remaining. Some up to some of the pillars. Some work is being done to preserve the temple. If I'm not mistaken, that's being carried out by RC, the American Research Center of Egypt. These brown marks on these pillars are from the bats. Could have taken up residence in the roofs. You can see archaeologists heading back to work. So most of the people in here right now are not tourists, but people working to restore and preserve the site. Exiting to the Temple of Opet. You can see it is right next to Khonsu's Temple. Last time I was here, this temple was closed. They were doing work on it. So I'm excited to see it for the first time. It's beautiful in here. <laughs> I feel like I say that a lot, but it's true every time. Take a look in here. <laughs> so this is some iconography that's always fascinating to me as a mother. The fair is being breastfed by the gods.
Another beautiful chamber in here. The various Egyptian gods. Oh, and I did find a bit in a hippopotamus form. I would have thought there would have been more. I'm sure there are. I'm probably just missing them. But I did find one over the doorway here. And then the final room where I mentioned that was where the idol... Oh, and look, you can see Opet again. And here she has a hippopotamus body, a human head, and I believe a crocodile tail. Amazing. Just beautiful. Stunning. So Opet was considered to be the mother of Osiris. Right, so I came over here to show you the Khonsu Temple, which is beautiful and you should definitely see it. But um, it's the Opet Temple that's kind of stolen my heart a bit there. It's stunning. Absolutely beautiful. Must see. I'm back in the Khonsu Temple. Let me go further in. Some power tools going, which takes away from the atmosphere a little bit, but you know, can't fault them for taking care of these amazing places. May we continue to do so forever. We got a baboon. So now we're going further into the Khonsu temple. So Khonsu was the moon god. And you can see the moon over and over again. And what I take are the depictions of Khonsu. I find it hard to keep track sometimes because the gods are shown in different forms and then of course sometimes they're shown as the pharaoh or the god, the pharaoh as the god, the god as the pharaoh, which confuses things for me a little more, but what a fascinating thing to study and learn more about. And even if you know nothing and just come and admire it from an historical and artistic point of view, you won't be disappointed. Again, an offering table or a resting place for the idol or the bark of the god. One of those things. <laughs> Here you have a beautiful offering scene. The table laden. And as always in Egypt, look up. I was invited up these very uneven stairs to see the view from the top of the Khonsu Temple. Unfortunately, Australia. my phone <laughs> and power bank both ran out of juice at this point, so I can't show you much more than you see here. But it was an awesome day, and Kanak really has some amazing hidden gems. I hope I've inspired you to go and check them out the next time you are in Luxor. Thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Going, going. Back, back.